So this is the Aurora Lighting SGU-10 lamp as it's intended to be used. Um, it looks okay. It's uh, you know, nothing special really. It's just a standard uh, warm white um, compact fluorescent lamp. But there's a problem with these, and the problem is that they don't last very long, and um, they cost, well, between 9 and 15 pounds usually, um, usually more towards the higher end of that, but I have seen some available slightly more cheaply. Um, and um, 10 pounds for a light bulb is really quite a lot. These, um, these uh, much uh, more standard GU-10 light lamps are um, are usually like I mean if you get a, a box of them they can work out less than one pound each, um, so it's um, really quite a scam they have going on with these uh, with these SGU10 lamps, and um, lots and lots of manufacturers make GU10 lamps. There is literally only two um, light bulbs of this of this SGU10 type. This one and there's um, a cool white version of it as well. Um, but those are the only options. There are no other manufacturers other than Aurora making SGU-10 lamps. So, um, I, uh, and probably everybody else who's ever used one of these um, lamps, I wanted to find a way to use uh, the standard G-10 um, light bulbs inside um, the downlighter. Um, now, it's kind of it doesn't really work very easily because they don't fit. It's um, it's both too narrow um, to hold inside the sled, and also it's a bit too short for the uh, the spring to. Um, I mean, it just kind of flops around in there basically. Um, so I decided to 3D print a few parts uh, in order to address this, and um, the first thing is. I 3D printed this ring. Um, now this is essentially um, a size adapter for the front face of the lamp. So you just drop the uh, GU-10 lamp in there and um, it now increases the outer diameter to the required uh, 63 millimeters um, so that it, uh, it doesn't fall out the bottom. So let's uh, put that in there and you can see it still um, it looks okay on the bottom now and to be honest, um, you can actually get away with just this. Um, if you take a file and file down um, the edges, uh, you can make it fit just as is. Um, but it still um, doesn't really catch on the spring very well. Um, you can see the spring is not under tension. The light bulb is not, it's just kind of loose in there. It's not being held in. So um, I came up with another, uh, another idea, which was to 3D print um, essentially this, which is a... GU10 um, to SGU10 adapter. Um, it's basically made out of it's made out of um, a standard uh, GU10 downlight um, holder, such as this one here, um, inside a 3D printed shell uh, with some uh, standard GU10 pins coming out the back that are attached to the uh, the holder. Um, so. You can just screw your SGU-10 lamp in here. Um, and on the back here, this plastic, the 3D printer plastic, it's difficult to see on this one actually, um, but it's, um, cause it's black. I have printed some uh, white ones as well. Let me just find one. There uh, we go. So uh, here's a couple of other ones. That, um, so here, here's the, uh, the white version that I also 3D printed. Um, it is very much uh, the same as the black one, um, but this one has, instead of using the actual proper GU-10 pins, I'm just using regular um, Allen bolts, 10 millimeter Allen bolts, um, in, in place of that. And um, you can see that they're basically more or less the same size. It's within the tolerances of the uh, of these um, down of the these lamp holders. You can see it plugs in just fine. Um, Um, same as the other one, like it slots in quite nicely. Um, and um, and yeah, basically this also has a secondary uh, function. In addition to being an SG-10 adapter, 
it it just uh, raises the um, height of this so that it's almost the same as as the original lamp, um, and that it also has here um, a kind of a flat area which this can cat this uh, spring ring can catch on so you can just insert this like that and uh, basically you end up with a pretty good replacement for um, the SGU 10 lamp it doesn't have really any unsightly gaps anywhere um, it does look slightly different than um, the original one um, like because it's glass uh, and this is sort of all white. Um, you don't really notice it at all when the lamp is turned on, but when it's turned off you can see it. And um, there is uh, another another thing you can do actually, and that is you can take one of these old lamps. Actually, I'll just show you with the, the old one here. Um, let me just get a tool to open this with. Let me just get some, uh, some schnitz here bring these in and um, so uh, bother which way around is this I'm just gonna test these again quickly and see which one of them is actually working because I don't remember um, so let's try this on the quick test very quickly go 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 is it this one yes that one works so that means that we'll take apart the other one um, so basically what we're going to do now is remove the lens from this uh, broken old lamp and then we can reuse it um, in our new setup. And then basically you're just going to take these pliers and just kind of rip around the edge of the lamp, rip the face off of it basically. And uh, it's pretty easy to do this. You just uh, have to be a little bit patient and careful but um, it kind of just peels back. You just kind of cut into it, nibble into it with the, uh, the schnips. And uh, before very much longer, just go all the way around and then it just lifts out. And there you can actually see the inside. It's got this kind of white phosphorus stuff. Probably shouldn't breathe that, but whatever. Anyway, um, you get this uh, nice glass piece now, which um, fits rather nicely um, inside here. So you can kind of take this out and then just drop the glass piece in the bottom there and put the ring on top of that and the lamp on top of that and the GUA 10 to SGU 10 adapter on top of that. And now we have a whole new stack of stuff and it looks basically pretty good. Um, you can't really, I mean, if you look at it really closely, you can still sort of see the, um, the plastic ring inside, uh, but honestly, you won't notice it. Um, it's, it, at this point, it's just, um, it really does look almost exactly like the original. So we can put this in, and close it up. And uh, I guess maybe I'll be able to post um, a comparison in the video editing to how it looked before when it was running with the uh, the original bulb. But you can see, like, it just looks pretty much like exactly the same. So let's uh, get this in and test it out now. Okay. Ooh, let's see, it's uh, it's quite bright, much brighter than the other one. Although I think that's because it's possibly uh, starting to die. But um, you can see that like the the light really, um, although it is mostly like it's coming from the center, it it extends all the way to the end. And when the light's on, you really absolutely cannot tell that it's uh, any different than uh, the original. And when it's off, the only real giveaway is that. Um, you can't see that um, uh, this uh, this kind of S shape in the middle. It's kind of gone now. That's the most uh, noticeable difference. Other than that, it's pretty much identical. Uh, so um, that's uh, 
that's what we're doing. And the next thing is, I was just going to um, show the assembly of the um, of the adapter part because it's a little bit it's a little bit more complicated than um, well than just dropping uh, a ring <laughs> uh, like this. This ring part is pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, I don't think we need to uh, go into that much detail on that. But um, but the adapter part. Um, takes a little bit of assembly, so um, I'll just uh, quickly assemble a new one, and we can uh, and we can try it out. So um, I've got some 3D printed parts here. I ordered these um, from one of several UK-based uh, 3D printing companies. Uh, they all um, tried. I've tried quite a few of them actually, and they all seem pretty good. Um, these are printed in uh, PLA. Um, I believe um, white PLA. Um, one the color for this really doesn't matter too much, uh, but the uh, the ring I think you definitely would want to print this in white um, because that way it matches the the lamp. Um, I don't think really any other color would look that great. So um, unless possibly if you wanted to actually three D print it in metal, that could that could work, but. Um, but mainly I think white is the color to use for that. Um, so, um, I did have some parts laid out here. Where are they? Okay, so to begin with, um, we're going to need one of these shells. Let's, uh, this one looks pretty good. Let's go with this one. So you need a shell. We need um, one of these... Uh, GU10 lamp holders. These are available very cheaply on Amazon. Uh, they cost virtually nothing, like less than a pound each in a bag of like 20. Um, so you need one of these. Basically this is going to go in here. Um, and then we need a couple of other things. We need um, two 10 millimeter female to female uh, hex standoffs. And um, we also need two uh, five millimeter long screws, um, M3 screws, and and these are M3 hexes as well, obviously. So you need two of these, two of those, and um, we also need some. 10 or 12 millimeter plastic cutting self-tapping screws. So I'll bring those out now as well. Actually, I'm not gonna use these ones. Let me just get the other ones, the proper ones for this. Is that these ones? No. Where did I put those? Here we go. So these are 12 millimeter um, M3 sized self-tapping screws. Uh, these will be used to hold in the ceramic um, lamp holder um, into the plastic. They have to cut into the uh, screw hole basically. So we need two of these. And uh, we will also need two pins, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So, um, the next thing to do is to cut these wires, because there's just too much to, <laughs> cable here to fit inside the uh, plug. And uh, the length that they need to be is four and a half centimeters. So, just cut those there. It doesn't have to be that exact. Um, the only issue really is getting enough um, enough wire uh, so that because when it's in here um, you need to be able to actually screw stuff in so it needs to be kind of a little bit out of the way um, it could it could actually be a little bit less than this and to be honest the shorter you can get it the better because um, you need to tuck all this wire in there and there really isn't actually that much space. So what have we got this at the, at the moment? It's now, uh, whoops, wrong way around. Uh, this is now at, at about, it's a little bit more than four and a half. Um, 
You know what, I might actually try taking this all the way down to four. I might regret this, but uh, let's try it. So we're going to put this to four. And we're also going to um, skin these a little bit. Not too much, just enough to make some contact. And um, twist them as required so that they go. So now, um, the next thing to do is to insert these into this adapter. And um, it's very difficult to see. In fact, I'm not sure that you'll be able to. But in um, so basically, you've got these two hexes. These uh, go in, in these hex holes, uh, and you kind of push them down. And um, there's a hole in the side of this hex post that the wire can go in. And then the hex post comes up and kind of crimps into it to make contact. Uh, so you need to sort of twist these sideways and then poke them in to the hole. It's very easy to do, but it's... Um, a little bit delicate so you can kind of see that's in there now you can actually see it through the hole in the top and now the next thing to do is to um, to get these hexes in here and now this part is a little bit tricky um, just because um, the tolerances are very uh, very close you have to kind of hammer them in um, but that wasn't too hard actually. That was that went pretty smooth. Um, so now you can see that the uh, the wire is, is in the side, and it's kind of being held in by the hex, uh, which is crimped up against it. So now we do the uh, exact same thing on the other side. Bend it down, and um, and then we insert it from the side. That's a little bit tricky. And this is basically where the um, the length of the wires is very important. Basically, it makes it very hard if they're too short. And, um, because you don't have very much uh, space to work with. But um, but it's not too bad. And after you've done a couple of them, you'll probably get the hang of it. So you can see now that's also um, inserted as well, I think. And now we um, are going to... You can actually maybe see it from the bottom as well. I'm not sure. I think you can possibly see it in there. So now we uh, are going to crimp this one in with the uh, the hex as well. Uh, like this. That one went in pretty nicely. Um, so now those are both being held in very, very fairly securely really. Um, and the next thing to do is to, to screw them in with um, these 5mm uh, M3 machine screws. So these basically screw into the top, oh, these screw into the top of the hex and just pull it up um, and just like make sure that those wires are really really being crimped properly good um, and you're not, probably not able to see this very easily unfortunately because of the angle maybe if I turn this around you can kind of possibly see what I'm doing yeah so I'm just screwing that in into the top of the hex and you just screw it along and, and eventually it'll start to get tighter uh, maybe, if it's catching, which it may not be. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, and then at some point you won't be able to turn anymore. And you want it to be quite tight. You want these, um, the, the bottom of the hex, it should really be flush with the plastic, if at all possible. Which, uh, cause it, yeah, that's basically perfect. And uh, then we do the same on the other side. see that. I'm not sure if you really can. Yes. Um, it might actually be easier to do it upside down, but then you definitely won't see it. At least not the initial. I'll turn it around once it's kind of lined up so you can see what I'm sort of see what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, let me screw that in. And it's also kind of starting to catch takes a little while. There we go. Now it's really biting in and we've got it. And again we want it to keep screwing until it's essentially flush with the, the bottom of the plastic there. That looks pretty good. So now um, both sides are screwed in and um, you know it's pretty tight. You can't, definitely can't pull that out not without snapping the wire. Um, it's making pretty good contact with the hex on the inside. And basically the wire is coming up um, 
sort of halfway up that sort of hex pillar where these are, are going in. There's a hole. It goes in the hole and goes up. And then the hex kind of comes in and like jams up against it really tight. Uh, it's making pretty good contact. So then the next thing to do is to just um, close this up, basically. Um, the only thing I would say that's important to note here is that you want to make sure that you don't pinch these wires. Um, and that will be more of a problem the longer you left those wires because there will be more wire to potentially get pinched. Um, so keep them as small as possible, um, as short as possible I should say, and uh, you're less likely to have a problem with that. And then you just take the two remaining screws and uh, screw it in. And those uh, are self-tapping plastic screws. They bite into the plastic quite nicely and make it quite a tight um, fit. There we go. So that's essentially a completed adapter, um, except for one part, which is the, uh, the pins on the bottom. And uh, there's basically two options here. One is you can use the official GU-10 pins, which I have. We'll do that first. I have a couple of them right here. Um, as I was explaining earlier, these uh, had to be ordered from China, uh, which was an interesting process. You have to buy an Amazon gift card and give it to some dodgy intermediaries who then buy it and then remail it to you, but uh, it did work, and, uh, and I do have some pins now. So those just screw into the bottom of the hex, like so, and now you have a completed adapter. Um, I do like to do a quick continuity test on these just to make sure that nothing um, has gone terribly wrong. So um, we have our GP meter here. Bring that in. And uh, yep, that's, uh, well, got some lead resistance there, but whatever. Um, so now we can uh, just test con content yeah, continuity between the pins and uh, the socket. And yep, that's that side. The other side. Uh, yep, that's also good. And just make sure there's no. Obviously, you don't want that. Why is there content? There shouldn't be. No, there's not. It's just my hand, I think. But why is my hand even doing that? That's weird. Okay, let me. Oh, because I was touching it there. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, so no, there's no uh, there's no cross conductivity, only straight through, which is exactly what we want. Um, so that's a completed 3D printed adapter, and it's electrically sort of seems fine. So let's uh, just take apart uh, this, bring this in again, and uh, we'll just swap it out with the one that we had earlier. Um, actually, wait, before I do that, um, let me just uh, let me just demonstrate how you can use um, Allen bolts instead of these official um, GU10 pins because because uh, hey, these are a little bit difficult to um, come by in the UK um, and it's certainly a lot easier to get um, some out some fairly standard Allen bolts instead. And I've got a few different kinds here. I think it is these ones that I need. Let me just check that. So he, here we have, um, these are uh, 12 millimeter M3 um, bolts. And uh, as you can see, they are pretty similar in size to the, um, to the official GU10 pins, like almost exactly the same, in fact. Um, but they are lacking uh, this sort of flange at the bottom, which doesn't really matter. Uh, but it does mean that um, really we want them to bottom out against, um, well, really, in this case, they're going to bottom out against the screw that's holding the uh, hex in from the top. Um, but it does actually work. Uh, sort of uh, coincidentally, the uh, the sizes all sort of worked out, and you can just screw these in basically all the way until they don't screw any further, and um, and that just works. Um, so the this is now basically rammed right up against the the screw that's coming in from the top, 
Uh, you can't screw it in anymore, and it just happens to be basically more or less exactly the right height uh, for for this. So um, you know, you can put it into another one, and that works perfectly, no problems at all. So so ultimately, I would say don't really probably don't really need to bother with getting these official um, GU10 pins. It's more trouble than it's worth. Just use a, a 12 millimeter um, uh, bolt instead, and, and that works fine. So let's test that in the um, in the lamp. Um, let's get it out again. Uh, there we go. And take out the one, the one with the the good pins, <laughs> and we'll put in the cheapy um, Allen bolt version instead. And then redo the sled, and there you go. You can see um, it all still looks pretty nice, um, but it's made entirely. Let me just um, tighten these up a little bit more uh, so that they're really rammed right in there. Um, yeah, that's not coming out. So there we go. Um, this should now screw into here just fine. Problems. Oops. Let me just. Yeah, it seems okay. Yep. And then that closes up. And now um, put it back on the quick test for the finale. This is not really in frame, is it? Okay, here we go. So that goes in here, and then you close it down, and you can see it works. It works very well, and it looks quite nice. There's not really um, much of a border where around the edge where you can't see the light, um, and uh, and even when it's it's turned off, you can't really see it either. It's just uh, there's a bit of a of a ring there, but it, it it's more or less. Um, invisible. So yeah, that's how you can install um, GU10 lamps inside an SGU10 lamp holder without um, spending and, and avoid spending 10 pounds on a light bulb.